Hey guys, Dark Humility here. Today, I am going to go over the best ways to use the new patch 2.6 rune words as shared by Macrobioboy Kano Debrunsky and, of course, Lucky Luciano. There will be eight new rune words that have been released in total for patch 2.6. Latter date has not yet been announced, but it will likely be February 16th, the 23rd, probably not later than that. So get ready for a brand new ladder. You know, they, they always launch on a Thursday, so get them, baby. Let's smash it. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the best ways to use these new rune words, and I'll share you guys with, you know, I've played practically every build in the game, so a decent idea of kind of you know what you might do with these i've heard a lot of talk lately from people saying these new rune words might be useless or they're not good or they're trash um and while you know they might be insufficient in many ways which i will also touch on a little bit and maybe not address the biggest concerns such as that i laid out in my top 10 ways to improve d2r video it doesn't matter they have uses if you want to know what they are and you want to know how to use these rune words cleverly and intelligently, we'll go over them now. So let's start with the five helmet rune words here shared by Macro Bio Boy, including Ground, Hearth, Temper, Bulwark, and Cure. So the new, the best uses for these rune words, in my opinion, fall into three major categories. Mercenary, so Mercenary Helmet. Situational uses, so miscellaneous, situational, maybe bosses or farms. And then the other main one is Sunder Charm Band-Aid. And there's a couple of other potential uses as well that kind of fall into no major category, but we'll go over them one at a time. So let's start with ground. Ground, the main uses I see for ground mainly fall into the situational use category and possibly um honestly it falls into all three categories potentially so the main one of course is that it will shore up the crack of the heavens lightning sunder charm and will provide a lot of lightning res and lightning absorb to counteract its negative effect of course on hardcore this is even more important because you need defensive stats in order to stay alive and you only get one life um, I've definitely uh, seen a bit of a split between hardcore and softcore, how they see these new rumors, and I would definitely say that uh, the hardcore people might value them a bit more. Yeah, there's not a lot of other crazy stats besides defensive stats on these, like magic find or plus skills, so I can totally understand why maybe someone on softcore might totally want to forego these altogether. But that first use must be said. The second one, of course, is going to be keeping the mercenary alive, potentially in a situation with a lot of lightning damage, such as against those nasty black souls that tend to one-shot your mercenary, so slapping that onto the mercenary um, can be very, very useful. Uh, the other thing, of course, that you're going to want to use the ground helm for would be teleporting yourself through Bale without T-Gods. Uh, stacking light res and getting some form of lightning absorb is very key to surviving black souls. And on hardcore, um, even with Barbo, once uh, when you start the very beginning of the game and you have no items, uh, it's definitely the case that a lot of people will not simply refuse to teleport Bale. But with an item that's this easy to acquire, only requiring runes that you can gather very easily from Nightmare Countess, you can definitely teleport Bale fairly easy with Barbo plus this, as long as you have a decent amount of light res, light res stacked on top of it, just in case the souls have conviction. So overall, that's a pretty solid use. And then, of course, there's one more situational use um, besides the teleporting Bale where the black souls like to live is the Uber Mephisto fight. Uh, once again, you know, T-Gods tends to be the go-to, but if you have enough stacked light res from something like this, which will help a lot, and then something that also gives Absorb, which is really an important stat for staying alive against Uber Mephisto, it's very important stuff. And, you know, staying alive against Uber Mephisto can make the difference between getting your torch and not getting your torch, even on softcore. It's a very nice budget uses here of this helm, and of course it is very budget. 
I, I thought of four uses for that one, so no one can really complain that these things do nothing. Now, the second one, hearth, or hearth, or whatever. I um, don't know how to pronounce it always, because I suck at that. But this one, I'll be honest, um, I don't really see too many uses of it. There's not a lot of monsters that do a billion cold damage. I thought of one situational use where maybe against Bale Chilling Armor, for instance, if you're a caster, that cold absorb can maybe keep you alive so that the Chilling Armor Reflect doesn't kill you. So against Uber Bale, that could be kind of nice. Uh, could also be good against Uber Durial, which also does a lot of cold damage. However, uh, mainly it appears to be the Cold Sunder Charm counter, and to be fair, the Cold Rupture Charm is the most used charm because the Cold Sorceress is freaking busted, and I don't know or think that will change in patch 2.6, but if it does, maybe this won't be quite as useful, but hey, that's a, that's a great defensive helm to help counteract that for sure. It must also be said that all of these Absorb Helms are particularly also very solid potentially um, as stop gaps for PvP and surviving huge amounts of elemental damage as well. So that is one thing you can also consider here. Alright, let's move on to Temper though. Temper is a bit more interesting than the last one. It has more uses in my opinion. So Temper, one of the most popular and one of the most fruitful farms in D2R, period, is Travancool. Travancool Hydras destroy mercenaries. However, if you have stacked Fire Res, so you got a lot of Fire Res on this, you also have FHR, which is nice for mercenaries as well, and Fire Absorb, and can get Life Leech somewhere else on your gear, uh, you have a very, very solid uh, Travancool Mercenary Surviving Helm here. Uh, used in combination with something like Guardian Angel, and then possibly a weapon with Life Leech, or just a really strong weapon to kill them quickly, can make it work very well. Of course, this is also used as the Fire Flame Rift Center Charm counter as well. And of course, we also have it being used... Uh, for Chaos Sanctuary farms as well. You can use it on yourself or the mercenary when farming Trav or Chaos, and in both cases they'll massively improve your survivability against either Venom Lords or the council members casting Hydras. Definitely pretty good uses there for sure. And of course against Uber Diablo or even Diablo Clone, uh, fire damage is usually the primary concern, and you can't block it like his lightning physical laser. So in that case, I, I definitely like the very... Once again, all these rune words are very cheap. These runes can all be acquired from Nightmare Countess. In the case of Rowl and Tau, they can even be acquired from Normal Countess. Alright, so that's a bunch of really solid uses for that helm. Of course, we also have Cure. Cure, well, a lot of people think this one's complete garbage because when do you actually need poison resist? I mean, it's not like that's a matter of life or death, even on hardcore in most cases. However, there's definitely a few cases I can think of that this would be very helpful. One particular case that would be nice would be against Hell and Dario. That faster hit recovery will be nice and will help him maintain that life leech so he's not being put into crazy hit recovery by Dario. And also give him tons of poison res, including, including poison length reduction, that will help him survive that. In combination with Venom Ward, your mercenary might actually have a shot of surviving Hill and Dario. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. Of course, you can also use it instead of Venom Ward on your mercenary to help you survive those types of things, because it does indeed... Uh, only take the helm slot, and the helm slot is not quite as valuable as the armor slot. So it definitely frees up more options for stacking poison survivability, and the mercenary does tend to die very quickly from poison damage. Of course, it also counters the rotting fissure sunder charm, and then there's also Lilith. Lilith's poison damage is probably the nastiest uber damage you'll encounter, besides maybe uber Mephisto's charged strike damage this one is pretty nutty so honestly early safe lilith killing option 
might save your life. I mean, it's got a lot of good defensive stats on top of that as well. Very cool budget options that can really be used in a lot of scenarios. I'd like to emphasize, of course, that you know these are the best uses and best ways to test these rune words in the upcoming PTR, which will likely start maybe today, later today, or um, I don't know, tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully it'll come pretty soon here. All right, anyway, we've got the last one, which last but not least out of this batch of five here, which are all kind of different versions of the same rune word, Bulwark. And Bulwark, I think, has the most number of potential uses and least number of situational uses. See, a lot of these are definitely a lot more situational uh, as you've uh, you know, definitely got to be using either that Sunder Charm or be fighting some really dangerous monsters that do that type of damage. But when it comes to Bulwark, Bulwark is just a really solid budget mercenary helm. It's basically a budget vampire gaze. It is perfect. It's got faster hit recovery. It's got life lead. It's got replenished life. It's got flat DR. It's got maximum life. It's got life. And it has damage reduction. Really, really, really solid. Uh, Mercenary needs the life leech and the PDR the most. Of course, the life and the FHR is also insanely good. And uh, honestly, before getting something like Vampire Gaze, Vampire Gaze, I would say, probably edges this out quite a bit um, because, you know, you can put something in it as well. You can get more PDR in it, more life leech. You can even get magic damage reduction on it. Um, but it's close. It's really close, and it's really, really solid, and it's very easy to obtain. Uh, good mercenary helmets, honestly, were previously pretty tough to obtain. Normally, you would just stick a whole bunch of resistance runes into the helmet, and then you have something that works because you just want resistances on the mercenary. But in combination with a resistance item or armor such as gold skin, Smoke, even treachery that you know will proc fade and give the mercenary resistances will make this item insanely good. So there's definitely a lot of really solid combinations. As long as you get another item on your mercenary with resistances, this works really well. And since this one has life leech on it, you don't even need life leech on the armor or the weapon, and you can use whatever you want, such as insight. This item will totally keep your mercenary alive in all kinds of high damage situations in hell. Uh, once again, if you just have like a smoke or something, especially with high defense, slap it on the Merc with this, your Merc's gonna be surviving the vast majority of scenarios already, which is really, really awesome. Of course, it also counters the Bone Break charm. Uh, so it, you, this helm is also a pretty solid option for uh, physical builds as well. Of course, it doesn't actually provide plus skills or damage, so that is a little bit of a pretty big weakness. Also, there's no magic find as well, so it's not like you're going to be using a lot of these helms um, on your character unless you absolutely need the survivability stats. And in the case of a lot of physical builds, they're ranged, and it might not actually be quite as useful in that regard. But, and of course it doesn't have resistances, so lacking resistances means that you definitely need a lot of resistances elsewhere to survive the vast majority of scenarios. But, the Mercenary, definitely going to love Bulwark, definitely really solid, and against really high damage monsters and things of that nature, that will definitely make the difference. I'd like to emphasize again that I really love that the devs actually made defensive helms that aren't just purely offensive, possibly gesturing and giving some love to hardcore by doing that. I do play hardcore, that's what I'm going to be playing in the Season 3 ladder. Um, can always catch me doing that, but I gotta say, like, Major props to some love for hardcore here. Maybe there's a the mercenary and you will actually end up surviving after all with hardly any gear against the most dangerous monsters. All right, so those are the best uses I can think of. Of course, uh, that last one too is very good against Ubers as well, which do a lot of physical damage. And there's just a lot of potential uses. That's what I think was the best one out of that group of five uh, was definitely that one. Let's check out Dobrunsky's video here. So in Dobrunsky's video, we have the 
metamorphosis. Now, metamorphosis has a ton of potential uses. Uh, I would argue this is actually maybe my favorite rune word of all eight released. It's my personal favorite. This one is a beast. So let's kind of go through, you know, there's some very obvious uses here. If you are a Maul Werebear Druid, you're going to get some crazy stats from this. So, and if you're a Fury Wolf or heck, even a Rabies Wolf just trying to survive, this thing could also be pretty incredible. In most ways, this helm actually outstrips pretty much any other Druid helm you could possibly have. Now, one thing to note is in the previous Helm Rune words, including in this one, you can make it in any three-socketed helm. And that does include things like where uh, Barbarian-specific helms and Druid helms. And that also means that you can technically get plus skills, even on those defensive options that we just showed. Uh, that means you can, get, you can get maybe plus three to Fury, uh, on some of those uh, defensive options, you can get plus three to Iron Skin. You can get plus three to War Cry. So that's actually kind of neat. So even the def purely defensive helms can still be made in the class specific helms. That also goes for this one, which means that theoretically you can get like plus three to Shockwave, for instance, and you can get plus eight to Shockwave total. This means that. Shockwave, which is a viable build that does a ton of damage in the late game currently, can do crazy damage with this helm. Te uh, technically getting plus up to plus 8 skills if this is socketed into a druid helm on Shockwave, which is actually pretty nuts. So that's another major use too, besides the obvious wolf and werebear builds that will definitely benefit from this. Of course... You could also use this helm as a way to transform from a wolf back into a bear, back into a wolf, and you can actually get both buffs. Um, and of course, you can choose you know, one of them to specialize in, maybe the wolf, and put more of your skill points into the wolf builds and synergies, and, or, the, or vice versa, the bear, and then just transform into a wolf briefly just to get the buff. Of course, this can also be used for Ubers as well, and it's incredibly useful pre-buffing these things for Ubers. One thing to note is that besides the Werebear, Werewolf builds, and even maybe a, you know, a swap between the two, or, sh or Shockwave, which are all amazing uses, of course, of this helm, which I definitely plan on making at least one build that definitely does one of those types of things, Besides those builds, you can also use this on a non-druid character because there are ways to transform into a bear without being a druid. Of course, any avid player of Diablo 2 knows this. It is called Beast Runeward. Beast will transform you into a werebear. It is a weapon, so it does not interfere with this slot as well. And any character can, in the game can transform into a bear and get this mark, which is incredible pre-buff against Ubers. That physical damage reduction and crushing blow is insane for Ubers. Those are two crazy good stats, and so is the attack speed. Um, imagine transforming into a bear briefly and striking successfully against a monster to get this for three minutes on a Zealer, for instance, getting all these extra buffs and then crushing the Ubers even easier after transforming back into a Paladin with this mark on you. The mark stays on you, even after untransforming, which is pretty incredible. Uh, of course, the same would go for switching back and forth from Werewolf to Werebear. You don't have to be uh, both of them to get both of the buffs you just have to transform into one hit a monster transform back and then hit another one and then you get both buffs which is pretty insane and of course the other all the rest of these stats are very useful too for melee characters not uh not just not just uh the werebear or the werewolf specifically uh, cannot be frozen means you can save a ring slot with the raven frost 
and you just totally dump that. You don't need it. You can just use something with dual leech or just more resistances and more power, which is pretty awesome. Of course, uh, you could do this on any physical build, and with as long as you have the beast rune word to transform into a bear. Now, the one thing I want to test in the PTR that I'm not sure about, I'll be totally honest when I don't know something, is can you put on a wolf howl, transform into a werewolf, and then chuck this on without detransforming from the wolf? I think it's possible that you can, and if you can, then you can also get the wolf bonus on the Barbarian specifically, which can severely buff, um, crazy buff your ability to do ubers and things like that of the like with like a frenzy barb and whatnot. Now since these buffs only last three minutes apiece, it's kind of perfect pre-buff. It really mirrors that fade treachery pre-buff that you typically can do for extra DR and resistances. Uh, with the treachery rune word in the fire of river of flame so definitely looking pretty solid for uber pre-buff i would consider slapping on both a beast and this item or even swapping a whole bunch of items be very annoying in standard gameplay especially when most games are like chaos or bail runs or uh terror zone runs and they just they don't last very long right they just don't last very long so you know, you're not going to have time to do all this in most standard runs, most likely, but I definitely see it being very useful in those situations. Whew, that's a lot of uses for this one, right? Definitely. I uh, I definitely see this being uh, probably one of the coolest. I, 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 I love this ring word. I actually think it's really neat and creates a lot of really fun scenarios um, revolving around shape-shifting builds, which definitely are among the builds that can use some of the most love period all right so next up is lucky luciano's video with the mosaic mosaic is definitely giving love to yet another build that needs tons of love or a class of builds i should say not just one particular build which is the martial arts assassin builds martial arts assassin has been Usually neglected. I'd even say in D2R by patch 2.4, which mean only gave them some extra attack rating. Uh, the builds still have always felt a little clunky because you have to charge up your charges and then expend them with a the finisher, and that time that it takes to charge up your charges means you're not really doing all that much damage. And you know, builds like Hammered and Lightning Fury just laugh at them because they can just instantly flatten all of the monsters. Not to say martial arts builds don't do damage when they actually expend their uh, charges, though. They do a lot of damage. They have a lot of potential. So what this rune word does, Mosaic, is that it allows you to keep your charges and potentially use finishers multiple times in succession or at the very least, allows much more of an opportunity to use more finishers than actually charging them up, which makes the crazy amount of damage that martial arts sands do, such as builds like Phoenix Strike and Dragon Tail, really, really hurt. It's effectively massively increasing their DPS. And yes, you can use two of these claws and potentially get an even higher chance for the finishing moves not to consume charges in theory. Of course, this does need to be tested on the PTR, but theoretically that should be possible. 25% on top of 25% might not be additive necessarily, but if you have 25% and then you have 25% of the remaining 75%, uh, you're still looking at, what is that? Uh, about nine, yeah, 18.75 effectively. So that's 18.75 on top of 25%. And then you're looking at essentially like a 43% chance to not consume charges, which is insane. Uh, of course, it's used in combination with Plague, and you can be incredibly defensive, have lower resist procs when struck as well, and then also have a crazy amount of extra damage. And honestly, this rune word, unlike Metamorphosis, which is probably the most expensive one that uh, is coming out here in patch 2.6 with a cham rune, this one is just Mal, Gol, and Thule. 
which is pretty crazy. That's a lot of power for not even what would be considered a high rune. Not even a not even a vex is required to do this. And I think this is definitely going to promote a lot more players playing martial sense. Now, since you know there aren't any ways to really pre-buff using this claw, it is pretty strictly used as a martial arts sin claw. But you can use two of them. You can use. Um, Whichever ones, you can use it in combination with a whole bunch of other claws like Plague or Fury if you want a lot of physical damage or all kinds of crazy claws. Just Bartux as well, which is a pretty basic option. Or even like a plus six martial skill claw that you can vendor from Anya. Yes, crazy claws that do even more damage. Now one thing to note is that these are the rune word stats, which means that you can put this in a base such as a uh just such as a greater talons claw that has plus three to phoenix strike or plus three to uh to claws of thunder and essentially you get a rune word with plus five to your martial arts skill on top of this crazy stat and attack speed and damage which is very useful now, I do think they could potentially bump up this number a little bit, maybe to 33% if they wanted to, and that would make martial arts sins even stronger and more effective, possibly being as effective as some of the top builds with a really good set of gear. Yet to, yet to be seen, but it's definitely very possible here. I also see maybe adding indestructible to it as being really cool, so you could potentially put it in an ethereal claw, and you could make this even stronger, maybe even increase the runes required for it, maybe, maybe make like a Zod required. You can make this a lot higher. And then of course you can uh you can make it indestructible, and then it does a lot of physical damage as well for a combination of leech and overall uh just power um, physical damage done on top of course of the uh, expenditure of the charges with the finishing moves would be really sick but that's pretty much all i have to say about this one i am um, i 100 have a hardcore martial build in mind with that and that's going to be a lot of fun for sure all right and last but not least we have kano with Couple of additional rune words, hustle and hustle. So this first weapon here, you know, the this is these are cheap rune words again. So we're we're going back down the ladder, kind of towards the helms again. And essentially, since it's two versions of the same rune word, you can argue whether or not it's actually nine rune words that are being released or eight, but at any rate. Uh, here we have it. It is hustle in a weapon and in an armor. The weapon version does look to be pretty solid for early game and insanely high attack speed you can achieve uh, with not even that insane of a base and with only a co-rune. Uh, bursts of speed, of course, will also increase your movement speed and your attack speed massively. Level 9 is pretty huge and it'll also last a pretty solid amount of time. So using this is pretty solid. Uh, I could definitely see this being a very nice early game weapon on a melee build of any kind. These both do seem to be geared towards this melee builds in general. But the other thing you could definitely use this for is if you didn't want to use treachery to pre-buff defensive stats against ubers, uh, you could also use this to pre-buff the offensive attack speed stats against ubers. Um, of course, this would cancel out Fade if you were trying to use Treachery, so you can't use both. Um, that for sure is the case. Um, I know for sure that would do that. Um, if you have ever had an Assassin, you'll know that if you put on Burst of Speed, it'll cancel out the Fade and vice versa. So that is very interesting stuff there. But overall, Hustle is looking very, very, very strong for all those types of uses, including for pre-buff. You can also pre-buff it on other characters as well that maybe are lacking attack speed and get a pretty solid duration of faster attack speed. Uh, think of maybe Bear Sorceress or just uh, builds that just have a tougher time getting more attack speed in general. 
It also could be used uh, to pre be pre-buffed, uh, pre-buff even faster attack speed and faster movement speed on something like a Frenzy Barb or a Throw Barbarian that both rely on Frenzy stacks for increasing their movement speed and attack speed. Of course, for a Frenzy Barbarian, it's their main skill. Uh, for a Throw Barbarian, it's a something they can stack up. You can use this on your weapon swap or something. Uh, maybe even two of these on your weapon swap, proc it really fast, and then uh, start chucking knives. And of course, on a frenzy barbarian, it's the same thing. I definitely see bar frenzy being probably the best way to actually proc this. Of course, you could proc it on anything. Once again, instead of fade, especially for ubers, but I mean like out in the normal farming. Probably Frenzy would probably be the best way to proc it if you're just farming normally. Otherwise, 5% chance is probably too low uh, to actually get this to work. You know, imagine slapping something with a Zon. I mean, it's going to take forever. I mean, it might help out, you know, some kind of jab Ubers as well. Once again, like, you know, you could proc this for Ubers on anything because, you know, you have all the time in the world. But in any normal farming scenario, Maybe dual wielding these on your offhand on for a frenzy proc would be pretty sick. Can make the frenzy barb crazy fast and the uh, throw barb crazy fast and crazy strong. So I could definitely see these uh, being used very very fun. Of course, uh, you know there's other abilities that it could do so as well, but that's definitely how I most envision it being used most effectively. And of course the mage plate right here. The Mage Plate is, I would say, probably my least favorite of all the Rune Words. It requires a Ko, which is uh, largely, I mean, it's definitely not more expensive than a Treachery or a Wealth. So those Rune Words you should expect to be better than this one overall. Uh, however, Treachery at least would get Res or something like that. It just gives you so many more stats. And... All you need for that one basically is a lem on top of, you know, what basically is this to some degree. Um, I mean, obviously, you would need a co for that, but still, like a lem. Just upgraded to a lem, and now you have a treachery and you have way more attack speed. You have the same amount of hit recovery, and uh, you definitely have a lot of res. Uh, and DR from the Fade proc. So Treachery is just miles ahead of this and not much more expensive. Of course, you also have... Uh, of course, you also have, you know, things like Wealth, which just give you a ton of magic fun as well. Now, that all being said... That all being said, I definitely see... Um, you know, besides this maybe being used on an Act 5 Mercenary as well, which I also think could be kind of interesting, at least for the early game... The armor, the armor really, I think the devs were envisioning something that would help melee builds really keep up in terms of being able to farm faster and farm more efficiently, and maybe try to close the gap a little bit uh, versus sorceresses, because, you know, sorceresses just have free teleport, which is just so insane. But the truth is, faster run walk is not, even though there's more faster run walk here than Enigma, and even though it gives you attack speed and hit recovery, which are all useful stats, they're not going to make you so much faster that you're going to be able to keep up with sorceresses, not, uh, especially in terror zones, and definitely not with farming either. I really wish with their mobility options this season, they'd really consider some kind of replenishing, self-replenishing teleport charges that you don't necessarily have to repair. Um... Maybe a whole bunch that someone can expend and they'll just replenish as you use them. I I don't see why they can't do that. I think that would help builds, especially when keeping up with sorceresses and terror zones. Sorceresses literally just dominate terror zones for multiple weeks in the ladder currently, because literally nothing can get until you know until people start getting Enigma. There's such a giant power gap there between charges teleport charges and enigma there's also a giant power gap between uh sudden um sorry no infinity and infinity as well but sunder charms actually kind of bridge that gap it really isn't anything like that for teleport yet and that's a big deal when it comes with other uh, two builds competing with the sorceress so i really don't think this goes far enough 
I do like though that it can make for a lot faster farming and can allow builds maybe in combination with the Harmony Rune Word or Paladin Vigor Aura, you know, getting that Vigor Aura in combination with this Run Walk. I really want to test that and see just how fast it makes you. And it's true that it will probably make a lot of builds very, very fast, but the truth is, uh, you know, once a Sorceress gets enough damage, especially how easy it is with Cold Mastery and Blizzard, uh, other builds are still going to be left in the dust, even with an item like this. I definitely think it does do something to bridge the gap a tiny bit. Uh, something like this, it's a lot of ton, a ton of easily accessible faster run walk. Uh, especially, you know, when you have stealth, where stealth really doesn't give a lot of useful stats to melee builds. It mostly just gives you faster run walk and FHR. And not even a lot of it. This gives you way more fast run walk and also gives you attack speed. And I, I definitely think it's fair to say people will definitely use this, especially melee builds, for keeping up and making their farms faster. Uh, I just, I just wonder whether or not it's actually enough. And that's pretty much it. I mean, they they can definitely increase the proc chance on this, but that might make it broken for pre-buff in more scenarios than just you know the ones I described with Uber pre-buffs and maybe Frenzy Barb. They could definitely do more for this, and uh, I don't know, I, I, I think maybe adding some teleport charges, something like that would be very nice, um, but hey, you know, I, 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 think, I think you have to have something that doesn't feel as good as Enigma, but can kind of bridge the gap and actually allow for more blink mobility because of just how strong it is. Otherwise, early ladder, completely dominated by Sork still. All right, well, anyway, enough of that tirade. That's it. That was, that's my review. I hope in this video you guys learned a lot of very interesting ways to use these new rune words. Um, there's a lot of them. They, they came out with eight or nine, depending on how you count them. And there are a lot of potential uses. Uh, for people who are saying they're totally useless, hopefully uh, this video will help to dispel those concerns. It'll help you understand that, yeah, these rune words in terms of the runes they require are very competitive for very specific uses and can definitely be used. But one would argue that maybe they don't go far enough. And, um, of course, you can let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But, of course, you guys can always catch me at twitch.tv forward slash darkhumility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action. And, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments once again. And... See you guys in the next video, hopefully after some PTR testing has gotten done and Dark Humility over now. Let's get it.